The post-war US metro systems are broadly underrated. They're fast, they're super high capacity, and all things considered, they've been pretty successful. These are Washington Metro, BART, and MARTA in Atlanta. Unfortunately, MARTA has not really lived up to its potential, but it should because Atlanta is an economic powerhouse, and one of the only cities with a metro in the southern United States. But Atlanta is let down by its transit system, which is surprising because it has a lot of the type of development you would expect to see near transit. Slick new offices, multi-use complexes, and adaptive reuse projects that would look right at home in Chicago or New York often built around the city's Beltline rail trail system. And I have a personal connection to Atlanta because I've spent a lot of time there visiting family. And it's always felt like an underrated place to me, with lovely trails, nature, amazing food, and a really good aquarium. No, but seriously, it's really good. Given all of this, and the fact that I haven't gone in-depth on Atlanta before, I wanted to give my thoughts about how I broadly think Atlanta can go about turning MARTA rail into a system it can actually be proud of while also broadly reorienting its fast-paced development towards public transit. Let's talk about it. Welcome to RM Transit, where we talk about transit systems that fly under the radar. The existing MARTA rail system is actually surprisingly extensive, with 38 stations and almost 50 miles of track and actually a lot of connections to really important locations, such as Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, which yes, I know I like rail to airports, but this is literally the busiest airport in the world, with over 100 million passengers per year, which means that on a daily basis, the Atlanta airport moves as many people as a fairly large train station. The system is also connected to Mercedes-Benz Arena, Atlanta's surprisingly dense Midtown area, and Buckhead where the system's two northern branches split apart to provide additional coverage. There are also two western branches for what it's worth, although one of the branches only has a single station. The technical details are also pretty respectable. The system runs on standard gauge tracks, unlike BART, and runs off of a 750 volt DC third rail, and has a top speed of up to 70 miles per hour, which is pretty fast for a metro, albeit a bit slower than DC or BART. And while MARTA stations aren't necessarily as architecturally impressive as those on, say, the DC metro, there are some rather special ones, including stations with exposed rock walls that remind me a lot of Stockholm, as well as dual loading platforms. There's also the Atlanta streetcar, which people will obviously complain about if I don't mention it, and while it's not exactly amazing, at least it does typically run every 15 minutes, and use proper Siemens LRVs as opposed to more traditional streetcars, which should be helpful if it's ever converted into proper light rail. So what would I do to improve this system? Well, the fundamentals here are actually pretty solid, but there are just a lot of places where MARTA needlessly falls down. For one, service frequencies are just bad. When I was writing this video on a Saturday, the red line was running only every 20 minutes, which is just not good enough. At the bare minimum, trains should be running every 15 minutes on every single line, and probably even every 10, and that means you don't have to consider a 10 to 15 minute wait added on to every journey you make on the rail system. Part of why service is so poor is likely because ridership is very weak. And ridership is probably so weak because even compared to DC, so many suburban stations are just surrounded by parking lots, or even just nothing. I hate to say it, but for a station like Bankhead, which has almost nothing of note anywhere near it, you might actually get more ridership with a nice parkade than you do currently. Of course, the obvious solution though is for MARTA to take some land near its stations and build nice bus terminals and then run tons of feed or bus services out into suburbs near the train stations very much on the Toronto model, which should help to boost these stations. Some Toronto suburban bus terminals move almost as many people as the entire MARTA rail system every single day. At the same time, Atlanta should take a page out of DC's book and do way more suburban transit-oriented developments. Like if you must develop along interstates, why not on the parking lots at Indian Creek, where you also have a convenient rail connection? The low frequency thing can be a bit of a recurring problem with the US post-war metro systems because their trains are so big that it's easy for transit agencies to run them at low frequency while still providing a decent capacity. Fortunately, Atlanta is talking about doing some infill stations like DC, which makes a lot of sense because the system is currently quite light on stations. That being said, the benefit of infill stations is going to be limited because there aren't all that many sites around MARTA that have a lot of development and don't have a station right now, the intersections with the Beltline probably being the exception. On this front, Atlanta should build its infill stations and ideally to modern standards and with features like platform screen doors. 
it should also think about refurbishing some of its more tired, older stations. The city also desperately needs to just double rail frequencies and get much nicer trains. Fortunately, it's actually doing this, and the lovely looking new trains from Stadler will be some of the first in the US with a fully walkthrough open gangway design. At the center of a lot of discussion I've heard over the years is the idea that Atlanta needs to build some sort of regional or commuter rail system. It's sort of like, if only we had a system as good as all of these crappy systems with five diesel trains per day, we'd be set. Okay, I jest, but I'm just not entirely sure that introducing yet another transit mode to Atlanta is going to solve all of its transit problems. Sure, you could maybe do regional rail inexpensively, more likely commuter rail if you provided crappy frequencies and diesel trains, but I'm just not sure that's a great value, especially in 2024. And I think there's a much better solution. Just expand MARTA rail. When I look at it, I just don't see a lot of reasons to build an entirely new rail system when you already have the core of MARTA, which already connects to lots of stuff, already has tunnels through the downtown core, and isn't limited to rail corridors, meaning it can serve other substantial developments that aren't on these corridors. This is especially true because a lot of Atlanta's development, for better and for worse, like DC's, is near freeways. I remember driving through the suburbs as a kid with my family and being shocked at the number of massive office complexes right up against the freeways. These could be really powerful for public transit. I like to think of this a bit like an S-Bahn, because Atlanta already has the core of it built. Two very high capacity cross city tunnels that both should eventually be able to handle at least 30 trains per hour in each direction, while they currently handle about six. In fact, Atlanta has more downtown metro capacity than either San Francisco or Oakland. Now you might say, but commuter rail can be fast, but the reality is that MARTA is pretty fast already. And if you really want and you increase frequencies, you could always institute a local and express service in the suburbs if your trips end up getting super long. And at the same time, a big chunk of MARTA already runs along existing rail corridors. So the argument that these would be so much more amazing if the tracks were at grade and there were level crossings and they were diesel and they were intermixed with freight trains just doesn't hold a lot of water with me. Ultimately, American cities with a lot more experience with transit are struggling to build modern regional rail. Just look at Caltrain signaling and grade separations. And I just think it's probably better to be great at metro than mediocre at building regional rail. So what does a long-term vision of a MARTA expansion look like? Well, kind of like Washington DC's system. Specifically, far more branches, ideally three on every single spoke of the system, which with the maximum capacity of the cross-city tunnels should still allow you to more than triple the service on each branch from what it is today. At the same time, these branches should be really long, probably extending up to around 20 miles from the city center. And of course, with all of the TOD and feeder buses I already talked about. And of course, if you don't think a particular branch is going to be super high ridership, you can initially build it for four car trains and do minor canopies and even some single tracking until you've proven that the ridership is there. But ultimately, I think running a half hourly electric MARTA service on a mostly single track line is better than running like a couple diesel commuter trains a day, which seems kind of inevitable if a commuter rail system were to be built, at least in the short term. I also think the city ought to think about an I-285 BRT system with nice double-deck buses and dedicated lanes that would connect the different spokes of the system with high speeds as well as other destinations around I-285. That would connect in more of the interstitial suburbs and more people would be on the frequent transit network while you'd also create a super marketable ring line. I really do think that's the key. Atlanta is a sprawling city with tons of office complexes along interstates and people living far away from the city center. And MARTA just doesn't reflect that reality today. But at the same time, even development that isn't particularly far from the city center is incredibly poorly served by transit. The development in the old fourth ward near the Beltline, for example, is really significant. But all it's meant to be getting is an extension of the Atlanta streetcar with its short single LRV trains. And that's at most. It's better than nothing, but that's a very low bar. I hope that at the very least, it's protected for future LRTification and longer trains. This should probably be fixed by more MARTA lines which connect some of these islanded developments with other areas around them. For example, a new trunk should probably be built from the old 4th Ward infill station up to Piedmont Park, Midtown, over to Georgia Tech, which miraculously isn't already on MARTA rail, and then further to the northwest towards Vinings. This line could then end up ultimately being a northwest to southeast spine across the city. 
There's also probably decent ridership to be picked up with a new suburban line, kind of like the Blue Line in DC from Decatur to Emory University and the CDC, which are near essentially no major transportation arteries, and then over to Marta's Armor Yard and then further north to the main area of Buckhead, where you could sort of start to create a bit of a Rosslyn type area that's served by multiple Marta lines. The city would also probably benefit from some people movers, and yes, I've said before, people movers are a crutch, but they're a crutch that would probably benefit Atlanta, which has built a lot of major development away from its rapid transit system. I'm thinking low-cost elevated lines, like from Art Center to Atlantic Station and then over to that new trunk line, and another line from Garnet to Mercedes-Benz Stadium to the Georgia World Congress Center, the Georgia Aquarium, and the kids running around mixing different flavors of Coke complex and then over to Civic Center. Ultimately, Marta and Atlanta have huge potential for improvement, and a better Atlanta would be an even greater urbanist reprieve in the U.S. Southeast with a great transit city. The city just needs to start getting bold and planning better. Thanks for watching.